Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Software Engineering Info Session. Uh, really excited to have you here. My name is Tiffany Webb, and I am your host for the evening. I am the Director of Product Marketing and Events here at Flatiron School. I've currently been with Flatiron for about three years. Um, time flies when you're having fun. A little bit about myself, I am based in Los Angeles, but um, as I was telling a few of you before I hit record, I am uh, a New York City gal from Queens, uh, born and raised. Um, miss it every day, miss my family, but the LA sunshine is lovely. I am an avid cyclist. I love music, everything from Rob Zombie to Jay-Z. Um, I am pretty much all about uh, whatever is, is really good in, in the music world. And I'm an avid TV watcher. And according to you all, I need to be watching Squid Games. So um, I guess that is on <laughs> my list of to-dos. Um, I just want to give you a breakdown of today's agenda. Uh, we'll start with the welcome, which I just did. Uh, and then I'll talk about uh, COVID-19 and, and our campus experience currently. Um, we'll go over the pacing options uh, of our programs, both live and flex. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the program uh, as a whole, like what, what it entails um, from a work perspective. We'll then go through the admissions process, talk about career services, uh, and then I'll open it up to, to Q&A for, for all of you. And then finally, we'll go through some next steps uh, if, you're, if you're interested in moving forward. Um, as I said in the beginning of this uh, call this workshop excuse me um this will be this is being recorded and it will be shared out with you all within 24 hours of the end of the event sometimes i can get it out a little bit uh sooner depending on how the video uh, fast the video downloads um but know about this time tomorrow it should be in your inbox uh, just a little housekeeping, you know, let's be kind to one another. Let's be kind to me. I'm the only person here. I'm hosting you. I have some slides to go through. Um, please put any questions you have in the chat or Q&A function. If I miss it, I'm not trying to ignore you. I'm just simply trying to do a lot of things at once. Uh, just resurface it and, and I'll definitely get around to it. Uh, so I'll go through the slides. Uh, and then I'll open it up for Q&A for everyone to ask questions um, on those slides or anything that is on their mind. So Flatiron School was founded in 2012 in New York City. Uh, it is an award-winning boot camp that has helped thousands of graduates break into tech and land jobs they love. We believe that education is the best investment you can make for your future, and we're committed to helping you learn the skills you need to change yours for the better. Hence our mission statement shown here to enable a pursuit, the pursuit of a better life through education. We currently offer career changing courses in software engineering, data science, cybersecurity, and product design. Um, and we have flexible pacing options that fit your life. Uh, we have campuses all across the country um, from Austin, Chicago, Denver, Houston, Manhattan, San Fran, Seattle, and DC. And, current, and we have a sister school, Secure Set Academy, that operates in Denver and Colorado Springs, but they only offer the cybersecurity program at this time. Um, once again, our proven job framework has helped thousands, and I believe we have just surpassed 5,000 uh, earlier this summer. Graduates for, um, get through Flatiron School and land for fulfilling jobs in tech. So COVID-19, we all know we've been going through this for about 20 months now. Um, and you know, from month to month and week to week, sometimes things change, but our community is the heart of what we do here at Flatiron. So we are dedicated and excited to share that um, we have reopened a select, select few campuses. As of right now, that's Austin, Chicago, Denver, and New York City. And students and prospective students will be able to come to campus and connect with fellow uh, students and alumni, find a quiet spot to study, or even attend events like this uh, in, in those markets. Um, for more information about that, you can visit flatironschool.com slash campus dash experience. Um, and I will put that in the, um, the chat for you guys right now so that you can visit that um, at your le leisure. Um, I will get that to you guys Sure. Oh, there it is. I have a list of, uh, of links that I can easily um, add to the chat. 
All right, there you go. So if you're interested, you can definitely check out uh, what we're offering in the space and, uh, and what that experience looks like. So let's go through like our pacing options right now. Uh, and, and just for right now, I'm giving a 30,000 foot view of Flatiron School so you can see what all our programs are like, but then we'll, we'll drill a little bit more into uh, software engineering. Currently, uh, we have the four disciplines as I talked about before, software engineering, data science, cybersecurity engineering, and product design. We offer two pacing options. One is live. It's full time. It's rigorous. It's nine to six every day, Monday through Friday for 15 weeks. At the end of that 15 weeks, you'll graduate and you'll start with your career coach to get to land a job in tech. We also offer for people who don't have time to um, uh, give 15 straight weeks to, or uh, a lot of times we say we don't. We don't suggest that you work a, a, a job while going through the 15 week pr process because it is so heavy, uh, heavy loaded with materials. So if you need to work or you work better in the evening or you have some life circumstance that 15 weeks dedicated, you know, straight does not work for you. We have our flexible option here. It's called Flex, which you can complete the course in 20, 40, or 60 weeks. Um, and that is all up to you and who your, um, your contact at Flatiron School will be at that time. At any point, you can choose, let's say, 40 weeks. You go, I, I think I can get through the software engineering program in 40 weeks based off of my life circumstances. If you find that you're going ahead a little faster, you can switch to 20 weeks. If you find that it's taking you a little bit longer, you can switch to 60 weeks. You'll be working with an advisor who will help you determine when you're hitting those milestones and, and if you should speed up, slow down, or, or stay on the path that you're on. Um, so a day of life in our programs. Um, this is for the live program, so the 15 weeks, nine, nine to six. Um, our software engineering, data science, and product design uh, programs are all fairly similar. And th this is just a, a suggested day, an example day. Um, things change based off of where you are in the program. If you're in phase one, phase three, phase five. Um, also, depending on, you know, the, if you're taking an East Coast uh, cohort, uh, you might start 9 a.m., or, you know, if you're, if you're in the central time zone, you might start eight. So this is just a round uh, about way to look at the schedule. But 9 a.m., you have a student-led discussion. 10 a.m., you'll have your first lecture of the day. You'll, you'll break from lunch. You know, you have to eat and keep the brain juices flowing. Then you'll move over to pair program where you'll work with a, a teammate to uh, work through some labs. Um, or projects. And then 4 p.m., you'll be given labs and mini projects to work through. 6 p.m., you'll have homework, which is just like finishing up the labs um, that you worked on or fixing any code that you may have broken. Uh, cybersecurity engineering is a little bit different. It's about 50 50 um, in terms of lecture and labs. So uh, you'll look at 9 a.m., you have a lecture, 10 a.m., you have a lab, then you have a lunch break, then you do lecture, labs, and then you have study time to go over your cybersecurity engineering. A lot of people ask, you know, what does the flex schedule look like? And that is exactly what it sounds like it's flexible. You have a certain amount of work you have to get through in 20, 40, or 60 weeks, and you'll have to hit miles stones, but there's no day-to-day -day structure like there is with the live program. So if I were to choose um, uh, the 20-week program, I can do no work daily and then cram it all into a certain amount of time to hit, um, to hit those milestones, which I wouldn't suggest because you should do repetitive work in order to kind of have this stick with you. It's almost like learning a new language. It actually is like learning a new language. Uh, where if you're not doing it uh, repetitively and consistently, you won't uh, grasp it for long term. Um, but there's no dedicated schedule, and, and that is one of the benefits uh, if you're a flex student, um, that you can make your own schedule and you just have to hit milestones. So let's talk specifically about software engineering. What is it? Software engineering is the design, development, maintenance, testing, and evaluation of websites and computer software. In short, coding sites that people use every day. I'm almost certain that 
you guys have Googled uh, <laughs> something today. Um, I, I Googled what, what's the weather going to be today? Or, you know, what are the top few news stories of the day? We all Google something every day, and that's what you would be coding. Um, you know, coding sites that people use. Our software engineering grads, grads land jobs as software engineers and software developers, um, generally on the junior or associate level, but sometimes people get higher end jobs than that. So what does what will you learn in this program? What, what, what does the curriculum look like? Um, first, you'll start off with the fundamentals, you know, programming languages for web development like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Ruby. Um, object oriented pairing, uh, object orient oriented programming, excuse me, data modeling like uh, SQL, object relational mappers. And then you'll learn front end development, which we, we teach React and Redux. And you'll learn back end, which we teach Rack, uh, Sinatra, and Ruby on Rails. So how does this work in terms of our phases? Um, before I said fun, like we'll teach you the fundamentals. Every student that joins our software engineering program will start with what I'm technically calling phase zero. It's not a technical uh, term in the program, but it is what you'll have to do before you start on day one, which is JavaScript pre-work, which incorporates also HTML and CSS. So it teaches you the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript so that you can be ready on day one to really hone in on, on JavaScript. A lot of people ask, why do we need to do pre-work? And it's a really good question. Um, we, we have pre-work so that when everyone starts on day one, everyone starts on the same level. You know, some people are, are really novices and, and they're trying to get into this as a novice and, and that's awesome, but you still should know some of the simple syntax and, and uh, wording and phrasing uh, before you start on day one so that everyone starts on a fair um, playing level. Then you'll day one is day one, phase one. Each phase for the live program is three weeks. Um, and so you'll learn JavaScript for the first phase, React for the second phase, Ruby on the third, fourth uh, is Rails. And then the fifth phase is your full stack. You're gonna take all your knowledge from phases uh, zero through four, and you're gonna build a final project. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. This is a project that people worked on in, uh, at the time we called it mods, but now we moved to phase. This is a phase three paired project that Adam and Tali worked on and they built a fully responsive uh, game called Words with Nerds. And if you've ever played the game Words with Friends, uh, which is based off of Scrabble, lots of iterations here, um, Words with Nerds uh, allows uh, people to play the game based on um, the letters that are shown here. You can uh, look at your stats, like your wins, your losses. Um, there are rules, there's a leaderboard, everything is fully functional. And students built this uh, in mod three and, and they could have very likely um, started with little to no coding experience and they were able to build a fully functioning game. So the next stage, what does the admissions process actually look like? The admissions process is broken out into some several stages. First, it starts out with um, writing an application. You know, you're going to have to uh, go into flatironschool.com and slash start, and you'll fill out an application. Why are you interested in joining the software engineering program? You know, give us some basic information about you. Then after that, um, that'll go be sent over to an admissions rep. They will then uh, schedule an interview with you. And this interview is just meant to look at your application and further understand, you know, why you're interested in this program. What's your background? How can we how can we help you get through this process? Um, and then you'll go through uh, what we call an admissions assessment. And I'll I'll post uh, the link to that in in the chat as well, so you can understand what it is and how you move through it. But it's a it's a uh, maybe 50 question, um, you know, assessment that just kind of sees what you're, what you're good at. It's not, um, 
a coding assessment. So, you know, we always say that you can start from zero to code, um, but it's more of like, what are your thought processes and, and seeing if, if you chose software engineering, does that actually align to this assessment? Um, you'll get your admissions decision after that. And if we uh, decide to uh, admit you, then you'll work with your um, admissions rep to work through your financing options, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, next. Um, we'll go, you'll be, you'll complete your pre-work and then you'll sign your enrollment agreement and you'll start on day one. Day 14 of class, we just, that's a, when we, when you hit you with a survey to see if, if we've uh, met all the expectations that we've uh, set up. So uh, another question we get asked a lot is when should I apply? Like when, when do I know I'm ready to apply? Um, and I think it's important for you to understand that your application is just the first step. Um, but if you want to apply, you should know that you are ready for a career or a life change. You know, what you're doing right now is not giving you the job satisfaction or life satisfaction that you want and you wanna change. And that's what we do. We really help people change their lives and careers uh, by going through our program. And then the second thing is you're ready to commit to the time. Um, whether it's live or flex, um, it's important to note that this is not a cakewalk. You know, you are going to have to dedicate a lot of time and energy to this program. And you need to be ready for that commitment. Um, I don't want to, it's not impossible. It definitely is achievable. A lot of people have achieved this before, but it's important for you to understand that this is a rigorous course and our curriculum is a set up to help you, um, you know, get your job in tech and, and do well. Um, what you don't have to know, um, and this is if you choose any of our disciplines, but you don't have to know how to code or hack or design um, or work with data um, to, to apply. Um, that's our job. Our job is to help you learn how to do those things. And you also don't have to know exactly how you'll pay for the course at this time. We'll, we'll talk you through that um, through our admission, admissions process. Um, and there are offers that we'll talk about in a little bit, but um, there are diversity initiatives, there's financial incentives, there's a lot of options that we have uh, at Flatiron School to, uh, to help you figure out how to pay for it. And then a pro tip is just if you are interested, but you're still kind of on the fence, you can work through our free coding lessons. Um, right now for software engineering, we have an HTML and CSS uh, intro, a JavaScript intro, Ruby intro, and then there's the API integration, which is a little bit um uh, I would say more advanced than the other three, but if you get through any of the other three, you can definitely get through the API integration. I just highly suggest you start with those first three listed there. Uh, and and when you when you start through the um, that lesson, those free lessons, it gives you kind of a, a a leg up on your application because it shows the admissions rep that you are really interested in getting uh, started on on changing your career. And if you wanted to know how to go there, if you go to flatironschool.com, you click on the courses uh, tab and navigate to free lessons. And for, uh, for software engineering, it's intro to coding. And from that, you'll see the HTML, JavaScript, API integration, and Ruby lessons listed. Um, and then just what we look for in an app application. We look for passion. We want you to be yourself, ask questions, show up to the interviews on time, um, you know, that you're passionate about changing your life and your career. We want aptitude, like we want to understand your skills. They don't have to be technical skills, right? Um, I like to say that any area of life um, has a tech aspect, right? So uh, you might be starting your first uh, foray into to tech, but you might work for, um, I'm going to say, like, you might work at a bank. A bank needs coders, right? So, like, we want to understand your skills and how you can apply those skills to uh, the technical uh, work that you'll be doing. 
We want your uh, commitment to progress. Once again, this is not an easy thing to do. And so we want to make sure that you understand the commitment that it takes to get through uh, this program and your desire to learn. You know, um, Flatiron is filled with uh, people who are uh, forever learners there, you know, and if you're getting into coding, that's something that you're definitely going to have to um adjust to. Uh, there's new coding languages every day. Um, there's uh, coding updates. There's uh, best practice updates. Um, and so it's you're going to be ever learning. And, and something that I love about Flatiron School is we don't just teach you how to code. We teach you how to learn, how to learn how to break down new languages and be, be successful. And then we want to make sure that your values align to our company's values, which are listed here, which are make no little plans, be scrappy, pursue mastery, work together, radiate positivity, and nurture difference. Um, these are so uh, important to us as a, as a company and an entity that we, we really want to make sure that our students also align uh, in that way. Um, so tuition and financing, I kept saying, I'm going to get around to this, and here we are. Um, there's three major buckets. Uh, one is you can pay up front, um, which, you know, a lot of people don't have the funds to pay up front. Our, our cost is uh, $16,900, no matter what pacing option you choose. Um, you can use a loan partner. Um, we are currently partnered with Ascent and Climb uh, to give all eligible students the option to pay for courses um, with monthly payments. Um, we also allow, if you can get a loan from your own bank, um, that, that is an option to you as well. And we also have scholarship and diversity initi initiatives. We're committed to making life-changing education more accessible by offering a range of scholarships designed to break down um, barriers around gender, race, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and there's also uh, another option that you can pay in installments, but I would talk to your admissions uh, rep about that. Um, it's relatively new for uh, both our live and flex programs, but it is there and I believe that is over a 12 month period. So uh, you, go through, you go through the program, you know, you, you apply, you go through 15, 20, 40, 60 weeks of the program, and then you get to the next one, which I affectionately call phase six. Um, phase six is uh, getting you a job. It's our job to help you find a job. Um, our career coaching uh, is a proven job search framework that includes dedicated one-to-one -one career coach coaching, which means that you will work with your career coach uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, we'll teach you technical and behavioral interview training, uh, give you some cover letter and resume support, help uh, with research and application guidance, professional networking support, because we've been doing this for almost 10 years now. So we have a vast employer and alumni network that you can tap into. And once again, we have an employer partnership team. And their whole job is dedicated to finding companies that want to hire our Flatiron grads. Um, I believe recently we, we've had a lot of grads hired by like Infosys and, um, uh, oh my goodness, it's a uh, escaping me it's gonna bother me it's i think it's on the next slide <laughs> microsoft um but uh we they hire a lot of our grads um, right out of the boot camp so um, as long as you apply the same amount of rigor that it took to get through the course that you do to the career coaching uh side of things um you'll be really set up to to really start your career in tech and i just i i know i harp on the rigor but like I think a lot of people think, oh, I did all the work in the course, I graduated, and, and that should be good enough. But like, you know, the career coach is going to give you a lot of information. They're going to help you and facilitate interactions with networking and so on and so forth. But you still have to do a lot of work. You still have to put in the work uh, of enlisting your um LinkedIn network and going like, hey, I just graduated. Like, you, your company have any open jobs? We're not going to give you everything. You have to meet us halfway. Um, so it's important for you to know that. And these are some of the uh, 
the job, the companies that we've had students graduate um, and land. Um, and a lot of these are big names. I mean, they're so like the New York Times, Spotify, Apple, these are huge names. But I also love that we have a lot of students starting at uh, places that are um, startups like we once were, uh, like Datadog, um, you know, a small company doing really uh, big, big things. And that's a really um, great question. What type of titles are these students getting companies? They are becoming uh, junior uh, software developers, software engineers. Um, that's kind of how uh, the, the titles that they typically have. Um, and the some people who are, good question, Alanda, uh, the, the question is, uh, these people that are hired, did they have bachelor's degrees? Uh, yes, some of them had bachelor's degrees, but some of them didn't. Um, and that's the whole point. Uh, when you are learning to code, obviously certain companies are going to have, you know, the X amount of years um, that you need to, you know, have a, uh, uh, sorry, you, I'm losing my wording. You know, sometimes it's like, you need three to five years experience to, to start this job. So obviously some big companies like Google are gonna have that. And some are gonna ask for bachelor's degrees, but more and more companies are not asking for bachelor's degrees because they know that people can be successful uh, without them. Obviously Apple was founded by someone who dropped out of college within, I believe the first semester, you know? So it's, it, obviously he's a genius, but, he still coded his way through the world. And so can you, if, if you don't have a bachelor's degree, if you have an associate, if you have a high school diploma, um, you know, we'll work with you to make your resume and LinkedIn really uh, uh, wholesome so that uh, people will have a hard time denying you. All right, so I'm gonna open it up to questions. Uh, I am going to stop share and look right at the camera. Um, and there was a question uh, from Austin a little bit earlier. In the FLEX program, is there an opportunity to work with other students? That's a really great question, Austin. And yes, that is definitely the case. Um, even though you'll be on your own pace, you will still be in a cohort. Um, it won't be like a 15 week cohort where you're with everyone day to day, but you will, let's say you start 20 weeks, excuse me, you will be with a group of people who also started uh, at 20 weeks or 40 or 60. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. You will also have access to, um, once you become a student, you join our Slack channel uh, and you'll have access to your cohort. You'll have access to uh, the alumni cohorts and you'll have access to um, a lot of people uh, who will be like, hey, I'm stuck here. Can I can I study with you? Or can I ask these kinds of questions and these after hour um, uh, capacity. So you are not going to be alone. You will definitely be um, a little bit more autonomous than someone in our live program, but um, you will you will still have access to other students uh, to build that community. It's a huge part of what we do here. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, Alex wants to know, to piggyback off Austin's question, how does the paired coding work in flex format? Also, could you please provide a rough breakdown of hours per week for the flex program? Um, okay, great questions, Alex. The first is paired programming is a little less uh, uh, necessary in the flex program, but it, it will be available to you because you'll be in these larger cohorts. Um, that are for the 20, 40, 60 weeks. So you'll have access to people and you can learn to code along with them. And perhaps you'll have projects that uh, someone will, uh, one of the instructors or one of the, um, the other assistants will set up and say like, hey, Alex, you and Austin are on the same level. You guys are uh, in this process. You can uh, code this project together if you're interested. Um, and for the breakdown, a rough breakdown of hours per week for the flex cohort, that is uh, basically up to you. Um, like I said before, if you are doing 20, 40, 60 weeks, you'll have milestones that you'll have to hit. So you'll have to get through a certain amount of labs and you'll have, um, you know, lecture and all of that stuff going on, which is pre-recorded for our flex students. But you will have to get through a certain amount of process like time 
uh, sorry, a certain progress uh, to get to those milestones to be able to move on to the next phase. Some people can do it in, I don't, you know, 30 hours a week when other people will take a longer time, right? Because some folks will maybe work late at night into the morning or all weekend because they work during the week. So it's, we don't really give hours per week for flex. Um, you know, if you can assume that a 15 week student is doing nine to six, you know, five days a week, that's uh, with lunch, that's about 40 hours a week uh, to hit 15 weeks. It might take 20 hours a week or 30 hours a week to get through uh, 20 weeks, you know, so it's just, it's however fast you get through that. And once again, if you start 20 weeks and you need to extend to 40, we definitely allow that. Awesome, I'm glad that was helpful, Alex. Anyone else have questions? I, I mean, I ran through this kind of fast, so I, I don't want to ignore uh, anyone who has any different questions or, or, or want to know more about the program or Flatiron School. Um, uh, it's always helpful to, to ask in this setting. You're also more than welcome to, uh, and this will be in the follow-up email as well, but we have um, what we call 10-minute chats. I'll put that in the, in the um, chat as well, but we have 10-minute chats where you will, this is specifically for software engineering, so you'll go on this link and you'll see a calendar um, and you can pick a time and one of our admissions reps will uh, chat with you for 10 minutes to kind of break down any questions that you have. Uh, Lonnie wants to know, what is the average cohort size? Also, are full-time students who are attending in a city where Flatiron is conducting in-person classes required to take the class in person? Lonnie, two really uh, great questions. Um, cohort size depends on live or flex. Our live is uh, up to 25 students uh, with one, uh, one main staff member. Uh, there will also be other people there to assist you through the program. Uh, you'll have a lead lecturer, and then you'll have people who will also help you throughout your 15 weeks of the program. Uh, a flex cohort might be bigger, but that's just simply because you have more uh, time. Uh, you still will have access to a, a lecturer. You'll have access to a cohort um, leads as well. I believe it's up to 40, um, but I uh, don't want you to quote me on that. Um, it might be slightly larger. It might be less depending on um, you know, the cohort cycle or uh, time of year. The next question is, if you are studying full time in a city where Flatiron is conducting in-person classes, will you be required to join that class in person? At this time, no. Um, right now, uh, we just hosted our very first um, back on campus cohort in New York City. Um, I believe it was about 20 students. Um, and that is our first cohort, but we won't run another one until next year. Um, in the other cities that we host, we have uh, locations in the other uh, eight cities. We're not forcing people to, to do that just yet. Um, we haven't decided on a date when we will be going back uh, full-time in person um, and on a regular basis. Uh, so as of right now, we're still ho hosting all of our courses, except for that one New York City co course that started this week um, online and you can still do the 15 week program. Uh, I, if you wanted to go in person, um, I would just keep an eye out on that first link I put in here, which is the campus experience link, which talks about uh, the campuses that are open and the ones that we're operating in. Um, I have a question in the Q&A. How effective would it be for someone who has never had any idea uh, about coding to take the classes online. Um, we've been doing it for many years, even before the pandemic. We've had a lot of students who have never coded a day in their life uh, before they applied. You will have to go through uh, some of that pre-work to kind of level set for day one, which is um, just really easy, simple, like what is a P tag? What is a div? Uh, what does HTML stand, you know, stand for? So that you can know the basics of how 
to basically set up your machine, set up your environment before day one. Um, and then you'll start learning to code. We also highly suggest taking those free uh, coding classes, which I will also drop in um, in the chat, which kind of give you um, a, a, a you know, an example of what you'll learn in the program. It's very basic, but it is uh, super um, uh, beginner friendly. Um, and also we host events like this one, but uh, we have one next week, which will teach you how to um, create APIs using React, which might be a little bit more advanced. Um, but we also have an intro to HTML and CSS, which teaches you how to, um, to build your first website really. Um, and that's gonna be on November 4th. You can find all of our events here. I will also add all events um, that are upcoming uh, to the follow-up email that I'll send after uh, this event is over. Uh, Lonnie wants to know, uh, may have missed the answer, but can you give the ballpark estimate of what percentage of the class work is group projects versus individual projects. Um, I don't have a, a, a full breakdown and you didn't miss anything. I didn't talk about that, but there is pair programming uh, throughout the phases. Will you learn to, to code with your classmates, your cohort mates? And then there are individual projects that you'll have to work on, especially your final project. That is pretty much a project that you solely do to in order to graduate and get your um, your uh, certificate. Uh, and that just shows like all the knowledge you have on both front end and back end um, coding. The pair projects are super important um, because there is no coding job, there's no software engineering job that you'll take that you have to code completely alone. Um, whether it's uh, knowing how to read how other people code, um, you know, coding is kind of like handwriting. Some people write perfect script, other people write chicken scratch. So you need to be able to like look at someone's code and then go like, okay, I get what they're doing and I'm gonna add to that code. Or you'll have to code together to be able to produce a project. It's really important to learn to do that because uh, in, in the real world, you'll always be coding along someone. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, there's no more in the Q&A. If you don't have any more in the chat, maybe I can give you some time back. But um, know that I am here. My email address was on uh, on all of the, the Eventbrite information. It will be on the follow-up email as well. You are always uh, able to contact uh, our admissions team for a 10-minute 10, 10 uh, chat, which will be in uh, the follow-up email, and um, we will always be able to assist, assist you. Lonnie is asking, is there any way to speak with an alumni of the program to learn a little bit more about their experience? Um, right now, we don't have a direct connection with, with an alumni that we can be like, hey, go to this specific person, but you're more than welcome to do a little re uh, recon. Um, if you go on LinkedIn and you type in Flatiron School, there's over 5,000 grads uh, that have gone through our program that have used LinkedIn to help themselves get grads. Um, and you can chat with them uh, in that function. Um, right now, we don't have any alumni doing, usually sometimes during that year, we have alumni panels or we have alumni hosting workshops. But at this time, we don't have anyone set up for the end of the year as we're getting closer to holidays and people's schedules are a little bit more uh, tied up. Um, but yeah, feel free to reach out to an alumni you may have found on, on LinkedIn um, and hear about their, uh, their experience. You can also read reviews uh, from alumni on Career Karma, on Course Report, on SwitchUp. Um, we don't make people write the reviews on there. They do it on their own. So um, there's more than enough information out in the open that you can do a little uh, search for. Sorry about that, Lonnie. Any other questions? All right. I am going to uh, say thank you all for your time, whether it's uh, early or, or late where you are. Um, I know how important it is to uh, cherish your personal time. And so spending your afternoon or evening or morning with us is always um, 
just such a such a a, a great uh, thing uh, for us to experience here at Flatiron. Um, I'm will send you the recording and uh, any follow up information within 24 hours of this event. So look for something in your inbox between now and uh, this time tomorrow. And with that, have a great rest of your week and uh, be kind and and to one another and to people in your lives. Uh, uh, we're always better off for it. Um, cheers and have a lovely uh, evening.